So the Queen Elizabeth, the first of the group, well, not the first of the group threes, but you feel like the, the big meeting's starting now, don't you, Huey? You do, Bruce. And Lebron, who I've ridden his uh, last few starts, he's in good form here. And, yeah, I think I could be missing a winning ride here. OK, Richo, so Huey likes the look of him. How does he look to you, Lebron? Yeah, well, what about that? You uh, lose H. Bowman and you leg up Ryan Moore with Lebron. I think down in grades, ran really well at Mooney Valley. I loved his run at Mooney Valley, Mooney Valley, especially the way the track was playing. He gets a huge opportunity here. Amanda Elliott's in the ownership, uh, the chairman of the VRC. So, oh, it'd be fantastic for Amanda to present herself for the trophy with the Queen Elizabeth. That's for sure. He's been a really good old horse. And so, Gallic Chiefs are not as old, Cheska. He's a stallion, but he's still keen, I think, don't you? Yeah, I think he's still keen. Um, he's a really honest, giving horse. And if you look at his form, all the right races. He was uh, fourth in a Herbert Power. He ran OK in the Caulfield Cup. Fourth in the in the Lexus last week to uh, Prince of Aaron. He was three lengths behind Prince of Aaron off similar-ish weight. So at this level, he should really be competitive. And he's the kind of horse that you'd love to own because he just gives his all. And since he's been with Darren Weir, he's strengthened up. He's got a nice shine on his coat and he's a, he's a tick for me. Lord Fandango, late scratch. He would have carried the same colour. So he's out. Richard, all Mega Blast wins have been on soft or heavy? Yeah, he does like it soft or the heavy track. He's not getting it here today. And he tends to be a little dour in these sort of races. I think he needs very, very strong pace for him to be able to compete today. Cheska, I'm fascinated with Casterton. Now, he was favoured in a race that Finch won three starts ago. So he, Finch was super, I thought, in the Cup. So how does he line up with Finch? Yeah, well, go through his French form. You can definitely make a case for Casterton. And then he's had one start here in the July cup and I watched that race carefully he got too far back when the when the winner placed horses were on the speed and late when he got out he came with a good rattle he's got the blinkers on today Chris Wall is elected to try and sharpen him up a bit he is sweating up a bit but he's a lovely stamp of a horse I think he's a good chance actually I think he represents some decent value and I have to have him in the mix Richard I reckon the only query with Jermaine is how does he back up because it's a quick backup. how does he look to you to the eye and it is interesting Interesting, isn't it? Because only two runners backing up from the Lexus, whereas five of the last 11 winners of this race have come through the Lexus. So traditionally, the horses that do back up run really well. And that Prince of Aaron forms outstanding. The other thing about Jarmay that's outstanding is his Flemington record. He seems to really relish it here. And he'll run really well. Interesting runner is Northwest Passage, who also is the other horse that comes through the Lexus. Now, the blinkers go on. This has been a wonderful preparation for this horse. He had 18 months off, and uh, there was a doubt that he was going to race again. Gay Waterhouse and Adrian Bott have done a great job with him. He won't find this any easier than what he did on Saturday. In fact, I, the blinkers, I still find it hard to see how he'll beat Jarmay. Miss Admiration, Richo, the last mare to win. I think she's pretty well known. You'll know her name. The last one to win was uh, Maccabi D. That's wasn't it. it. So yeah. for Miss Admiration being the mayor here, it's not going to be easy. Yeah, well, she's no Miss. She's no Maccabi D, is she? Miss Admiration. But she's actually my top tip in the race because she made ground, a little like Huey's horse in uh, Libran, made ground at the worst part of the track at Mooney Valley against the bias. I loved her last 200 metres there. They played up towards a Melbourne Cup, hoping to get in there. I think they'll get a consolation at around $10 or $11 today because I think she peaks for the race. She gets in nice and light at the weight with 54 and a half and she's ridden by a legend who's hoping to join another one with 73. Yeah, Damien Oliver. And, and Richard, uh, Sully second in the derby this time last year. Um, is he working his way back to form, do you think? Well, I was just thinking that he's uh, he is getting closer and closer to a win. The jump from three-year-old competition to four-year-old is a big jump. He struggled with it a little bit this spring, but I feel now he's starting to work towards his best form. Whether that's good enough, he's never won beyond 1,600 metres, uh, although he has been placed at longer trips. Uh, I think he's still got more to do. OK, let's go to the tab. To you, Jared. I, I think there's a, a solid favourite here. It certainly is. We're holding six times more on Jar May than on the next best back runner here, Bruce. And between scratchings of midterm this morning and Lord Fandango this afternoon, Jar May was 4.40 to 3.70. Now been hovering between 2.90 and $3, but it's certainly the money horse. Gallic Chieftain's been 6.50 into six just a second ago. Libran's getting out in the market now, out to $8. And the one that's just being nibbled at odds late is North. 
Northwest Passage, 13 into $9, but this would be a horror result for the tab if Jar May were to win. Here are you who won this race back in 2009. You know this form so well. Who's taken your eye? Well, I actually like Libran, especially with Lord Fandango out. I thought he might have been the one to beat until he's late scratching. The, the concern I have for Jar May is a, is a uh, slow pace. I don't okay. think there's going to be much of a gallop, which is going to make it difficult for him from that draw. Uh, good inside there from Hugh Bowman. Let's go out to you, Hamish. Thanks, Bruce. Uh, I assume as a trainer, when there's a million dollars up for grabs and a good sprint, it's easy to get out of bed in the morning, Peter Snowden? Absolutely. Uh, if you got one good enough, it's, uh, it's always that. You've got one good enough. Uh, I said to you uh, off air, when did you know you had a freak? And you don't think you do? No, I don't think he is. He's just very genuine and very honest. He's a r- r- real tradesman like horse that runs in wet and dry and carries weight. Barry's out a disadvantage to him. He has good gate speed, but uh, like he ticks all those good boxes, but uh, I wouldn't say he's a freak. Another solid race up against him today. Uh, but he's a very honest campaigner that always brings his best form to the race. So as a trainer, that's all I can ask of him. Now, he loves this race, Pete. How, how do you see the, pla- the race uh, panning out for him? Well, I think that we're all looking towards him to lead, but we don't have to lead. Um, there is quite a bit of speed in the race. Uh, we're going to be very mindful. Uh, our first intention yesterday was to get the outside, clear them quickly and get the cross the outside but walking the track this morning I thought I don't think it's going to be that big an advantage today as it was on Tuesday and Thursday uh, has dried out quite a bit more I think we'll probably go for the crown down the middle and uh, we'll definitely rate him for the first part of the race because there's some very good finishes here uh, so we're very mindful of not going too hard too early and you've got the best jockey back on board Karen McAvoy I thought he was to the last race <laughs> but, but look now he's riding great form he knows the horse really well and uh, hopefully they, they get it right today were you confident on Everest day I was. Um, as confident as you can be, similar to today, without uh, showing respect for every other run of the race. They're in there because they're the best around, and uh, same as the case today with a bit more ice cream on top. There's a couple of uh, European horses there. Um, but it, it's a great race, but I, I wouldn't swap my bloke for anything. Good luck today. Appreciate it. Thank you. Pete Snowden, trainer of Red Zell. Fourth race today was the Garucci Chatham Stakes Group 3, 1400 metres. Used to be the feeder into the big mile on the last day, but it's all changed around. There was a cracking pace around 122 and a little bit of change. Three and four showed a whole lot of ticker on the deck in lane for John Thompson. It was a competitive race, Jim, which he turned five consecutive places for him. He's just a beauty, we know that. And for John, first winner for the week since 2012 when Nikita won the Cornwall Stud. He's a terrific trainer, has only the one runner today, and he goes home a happy man after the Zerucci Chatham. So we get to the Queen Elizabeth. We go to you, Jared, for a hot horse from the town. It's going to be Northwest Passage, Bruce. Thirteen to nine dollars fifty, eight dollars fifty, I should say. Jar May just out to three twenty now. In saying that, it's still by far our worst result. So a big go for Gay's horse, who tried to qualify through the Lexus Stroke Hotham last Saturday. Well, I think the the key to this race will be pace, and I think Northwest Passage might be the key to that pace too, because he's a Gay Waterhouse horse. He did race right on the pace at Geelong and I think it'll be a, a big chance he'll do it again here. And importantly this is 100 metres back from the derby so you get a little bit longer run to the first turn. Chris you're behind the barrier with Kevin. Uh, who are you chatting to? I'm um, talking to Almeida and Craig Williams. Craig you ran second on this horse in the in the where was it, Adelaide Cup and uh, this is obviously the ideal race for this horse today. Yeah that's right he's fifth up today Chris and he, and he bides well he, his run style means that he gets back so it looks like good tempo so hopefully we can get, get a good card in the race from Jermaine or even Lebron. Good luck Craig. Well, Hugh, you questioned the tempo, didn't you? thought maybe the, the knock against Jermaine, if there's one, there won't be enough pace. Yeah, I, don't, I can't see it being a frantic pace. And Northwest passage, yeah. passage controlling it from the front, Mega Mars likely to come and sit outside it. And I just think it'll set up well for Lebron from that draw. Yeah, it's always, always dangerous. 
dangerous if you let a gay waterhouse trained horse go forward and dictate the tempo. Um, they are onto that bend pretty quickly, so the horses will have to slot in and find their position. So we're about to find out, aren't we? It's a big prize, an extra $100,000 bonus to many of the horses because they paid up for the Melbourne Cup. So it's a, it's a big prize, the Queen Elizabeth. It's really the consolation. But Von Gomas won this race last year. It got him a high rating to the end of the Cup this year. That's what Jermaine's about and a few others today as well. Here's Matt Hill for his call of the Queen Elizabeth. We are trained galloper. Easy to spot the grey, seven year old. $15 on the tote. Mega Blast is in and they're set for the Queen Elizabeth. 2,600 metres and they're racing. LeBron from barrier number three jumped away well with Sully. Northwest Passage is also pushing up on the outside, wanting a piece of the action. Not far away, Gallic Chieftain on the rails from Red Elto. Miss Admiration's forcing up as well. She's gone to fourth. Then came behind those horses, Caston and Jarmay, Mega Blast, Ormito, and two links away, Sir Isaac Newton. So they leave the straight with 2,200 metres to run. And Northwest Passage is the leader by about a length and a half to Sully. Miss Admiration continues on a wide run, 3D, to force a bit more pace. And they were followed next in the field by Gallic Chieftain on the rails from Lebrun. Two and a half lengths away then is Red Elto, Jarmay. Back in the field, Casterton, Ormito, Mega Blast, and Sir Isaac Newton is at the back of the field. Northwest Passage is the leader in the Queen Elizabeth by about a length and three quarters. Miss Admiration. They were followed by Sully, third the outside. Next is Gallic. Chieftain, a length and a half away LeBron who settles on the outside of Jarmay and they're not going hard Red Elto the outside of Ormito past the 1600 metres Casterton third last and then Sir Isaac Newton wanting to pull and about a length and a half away to Mega Blast with the head carried low at the end Heading towards the 1400 metres, and the leader is Northwest Passage by a length and a half, Miss Admiration. A length away, third is Gallic Chieftain, fourth is Sully. Then came Jar May, who's tucked away on the inside of LeBron, a length or Mito. Then came Red Elto, who spots the speed at least eight from Sir Isaac Newton, casted and back to second last, and Mega Blast is last of all. It hasn't been run that hard as they reach the 1100 metres. Northwest Passage by just on a length, Miss Admiration. They were followed in third. Third by Gallic Chieftain from Sully of the Thousand. Jarmay on the inside of LeBron. Two links all Mito, Red Elto. And they were followed by Sir Isaac Newton, who's pulled pretty hard then Casterton. And at the end is Mega Blast. 800 metres out. Northwest Passage being rated to a nicety. Three quarters of a length, Miss Admiration. Then Sully, who's about to ease out three deep. Gallic Chieftain the inside, LeBron out wider. Jarmay and the Blue Jacket about to get going. Four or five off the lead from all Mito. Then Red Elto, Mega Blast the outside from Sir Isaac Newton around the turn of the 450. Northwest Passage sprints up by a length and a half. This admiration. Jarmay's got the run from Gallic Chieftain. Then LeBron and Casterton down the outside. Northwest Passage is wayward. Sully moves up on the outside of Jarmay. This drive for stride of the 200. It's Jarmay about a half length in front of Sully and Casterton. Sully lifting. Sully takes Jarmay with 100 to go. Sully, Jarmay. It was a beauty, what a great call by Matt Hill. Beaten, but not bowed, and came back. David Hayes won this race in 91-92. He hasn't had a winner for the whole week. He's been desperate for one. He looked beaten, didn't he? He was gone. Sully had his measure. Sully had him cold. And Jarmay, who'd had the run on the Saturday and was very strong in the finish, fought back and won. And what makes the victory even sweeter for David Hayes and Connections is that he was one of the horses in the race eligible for the extra $100,000 bonus. Uh, having missed out on the run in the Melbourne Cup, they desperately wanted to run in the Melbourne Cup, but he wasn't able to get his position. And here, it's called a consolation race, and they put on that bonus for this very reason, and he's a deserved winner. And the jockeys, they were superb, the two of them, weren't they? Well, they were, the, the, the race was slow, but the pressure built early, so it allowed... Uh, the, the winner yeah. took, left a little flat footer when they got going, but he was strong late. Excellent. Sully might have been a little bit unlucky here. He was basically run off his line by Northwest Passage rolling out. Now, I don't know how much.
much it cost him, but it's cost him a little bit. And Jamay's been able to fight back and beat him. How far in front do you reckon he got? A long neck to half a length? Oh, I think he got half a length in front. And, you know, it just goes to show that the run on Saturday might have been the difference. And Julian means Jamay probably gets into the Melbourne Cup next year because that gets his rating right up. It's a massive result for them in more ways than one. He's a solid horse. And your Libran ran well, didn't he? He did run well. I just wonder whether the trip might be a little too far for him because he was travelling superbly at the 600 metre mark and just didn't finish like he did at Mooney Valley last start. He always goes a big way though, doesn't he? he so does. here's Mark Zara with Chris Simons after what was a spectacular race. Well, Mark, that was a big ding-dong down the straight. You spaced the rest of them, but uh, were you confident when you hit the line? I was. Um, I sort of just saved ground the whole way and... Uh, I was lucky it opened up for me on the inside and he went out and I went in and I reckon he had a length on me and um, testament to Hayes Campbell, I had him rock out fit like it was only the last, I reckon 25 that I got the upper hand, you know. Now we're knocking on the door for the group ones, you're riding a horse that we don't know a great deal about, Latrobe, what can you tell us? Um, I probably know as much as anyone else but I had a phone call from Lloyd Williams and um, you know he told me he's a really class horse and he's going well, he, his best form looks over you know, a little bit further, but I reckon today, you know, a bit of a freshen up, um, you know, be right there with his class for sure. Now, you've just been recently married. Did you bring your wife today? It is family day. Yeah, she's out there. Uh, she's out there support me on, so, uh, you know, she does well to put up with me all week riding light, so um, you have to let the hair down and have a few drinks tonight. We all do a lot to put up with you, but anyway, <laughs> well done, mate. <laughs> David Hayes, Ben Hayes, Tom Dabernick. Uh, gee, it's hard to get a winner during Carnival, and David, uh, I think you may have given up. Uh, I definitely, Mark gave it a perfect ride, and then when the grey came up outside him, I thought, oh, God, he's got us. And the way the week's gone, that's how it's been all <laughs> running seconds and thirds in good races all week. And uh, Ben didn't give up, actually, for fairness to Ben, and he lifted it, and I think Tom was in the toilet. <laughs> you lifted it, Benny. You said, yeah, we'll fight back. Yeah, we, well, he was fit, and we got a cheer together across the line, and he got there. So I think that's the best way to win. I think you're right. And, Tom, you know, you just get that gut feeling. He might have been competitive in a Melbourne Cup because it was Prince of Aaron ran third. Yeah, well, we are actually very confident if he got in the Cup. So um, hopefully this time next year, and it's good that Angus Gold is here to uh, actually witness it. So it was, it was a good effort by everyone involved. Yeah, that's right. I mean, that'll help him get into the field for next year. I, I think that might be enough to get him in. And, and he's a genuine two-miler who we haven't got to two-mile yet. So what won that was his staying ability. Uh, and, uh, look, he's a he's a quality horse that's backed up, and I think he's better with his race of space. And the other thing is, he loves Flemington. Yeah, he does, and so do I now. <laughs> <laughs> Hoff, it's always great to see you. <laughs> not, not very hoffing this week. <laughs> <laughs> and off they go. David Hayes, the Hall of Fame with Ben and Tom. A great win to John, mate. Great stuff, Richard. Of course, these colours, Atalak, Colin Hayes and also June David Hayes have been carried to Melbourne Cup victories for sure. Melbourne is mourning the death of Pellegrini's cafe owner, Sisto Malaspina.